Hey there! Long time no see. Well, this is an exception, this is a very different video, but I had a business trip to Germany and I worked basically all day there and as a, as a noob in my job I had a lot to learn and I was... Uh, I am socially awkward, so this was a very stressful time for me, but at the same time a great opportunity to visit a place that I've never been, Germany. And we are in the Bavaria and in the Bavaria we have some really interesting places. In the meantime, my free time, I googled, you know, what can I visit, you know, in the in the you know weekends and my free time. So, when we are visiting Willingen, Willingen, if I'm not mistaken, that's pronunciation, they had a museum in there, a Luftfahrt museum, and it's basically an exposition museum for families, and that's a beautiful place right side uh, by the side of uh, this you know air club so you have some people training to get their you no know, licenses and right next to it you have a yard with some planes and some miniatures so this is the part one of my museum hunting in germany this one in willigen schwillingen so let's analyze the pictures and then the videos so yeah this is me in the entrance and this was like two or three in the afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, as you know, I, I started playing DCS uh, recently, and I, I am a big fan of like Cold War jets. And this is the first jet that I encountered. And I was really excited because I never seen like any, any Cold War jet in my life, outside the ones you can see in Brazil. Brazil has some... Mihage 3? They had some Mihage 3s, I'm not mistaken, or 2000. I don't remember, but it, it is a Mihage. We have a lot of AMXs, and of course, the F5. So these are the, the, the basic jets you can see here in Brazil. I saw an F5 really close and a really nice display in the Canoas Airbase. But I mean, this is a MiG 15, and I've, I, I fly this on DCS, so. This is really, really cool. Um, everything's in German, of course, but you can see Migoyen Guverich MiG-15 name. I will not pronounce that. I don't know. This, that's the name NATO gave this plane. This is his ass. This is the faggot ass. If you can say that. Really cool plane. Uh, this one, I don't think had the engine. Some, some of the planes here had their engine. This one I'm not certain. So, MiG-15, then you have a Fiat G91. Very interesting plane, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there, there's uh, some developer developing this plane on the CS. I'm not sure who, because this CS, you know, they claim to be developing 15 different modules, but here you have it. And I will link uh, some, I have some links on the description about the interesting planes I have here. There is a, short video on YouTube about, I think, Military History Aviation or another channel about the Fiat G91. Really interesting plane. In the videos I'll check them better, but yeah, some short pictures. Yeah, this is a MiG-15, you know it's glory, you have the 37 and 23 in there, uh, some fuel tanks, and in the background you have a B-105. This one is not a, in a good condition. Uh, the museum has no this is what I could capture from the from the general vibe of museums. They had so many planes lying around. Some museums have some planes exposed and not in good conditions because they had tons of these planes. And then you travel to a nearby city and they have like a, a really pristine condition plane. So yeah, that that B105 probably like scrap. But look at look at this man. This is a really nice plane. I, I really love first, second, and some third generation planes. They are, they, I, I think they're like the coolest engineering era. Tons of families with kids, you see in the recordings. And yeah, I forgot I had sunglasses. Later pictures I'll have my sunglasses on. I, I'm, I'm not the brightest and I, I was really tired. You changed the time zone. My, my brain really did not like that, that change, but yeah. Big 15, BO-105, and then a Canberra. Uh, a or B. I don't know, I don't know anything about the Canberra, I'm not a big bomber guy, but yeah, Canberra bomber, as you listen, you will hear in Rising Storm 2. Uh, really interesting to see this in real real life, because I had a different image, I thought, 
most of the planes, the majority of them, were bigger than I thought they would be. That this is the, the consensus. So yeah, the Canberra, really odd plane. And then this is a Vampire, single seat Vampire. Uh, not, in, not in a good condition, but still. This one is actually small as I imagined. This is a really small plane, really cute. I, I really like it. Uh, I have a book in which the, uh, there's this pilot flying a Vampire. Let, let me check that. There you have it, Frederick Forsyth, the pastor. My dad gave me this book, really cool. And you can see here, let me just help you with that. Yeah, it's a vampire. Come on, let me feel better. So, vampire is a really special plane to me because I, I really love this book and I got to see one in real life. So moving on from the vampire, I will have videos later on. So this is just pictures that I took. Uh, a hawker. Hunter, if I'm mistaken, uh, Royal, Royal Marine Corps, uh, Navy, I don't know the difference. You can see this is a first generation fighter because of rockets. So, yeah, we're talking first generation here. Okay. Uh, a Sabre, a Canadian Sabre. This is a CAC something, it's not an F-86. And this is interesting because the Sabre is an American plane, goes to, you know, be product uh, you know they manufacture this in Canada, and then this product of you know United States Canada Corporation goes to Western Germany. It's really easy to, to you know differentiate Western and Eastern Germany because of the planes. So yeah, uh, Saber, really cool plane, much bigger than I thought it would be in real life. Uh, this is a T33. Uh, really cool plane, but we have a similar one in Brazil, so I kind of, I kind of knew what to expect. And then, this is Eastern Germany, an Antonov 2. Man, I finally got to see an Antonov 2, this, this iconic plane, this relic of a plane. Finally got to find one. And in the video, later I'll show you, I got, I got into the plane. R really cool plane. I really, I'm more fond of the Antonov 2 now than before. Uh, random picture, the MiG-21, I got to see fish bats, really curious NATO names, right? Like you have the MiG-15, I'll try not saying it a lot of times, uh, you have fish bat and frog food and all that, but no, this one in DCS I still don't own it, I'm trying to learn, you know, the, the learning curve, MiG-15, 19, and when I got the basics, only guns and all that, then I'll go to the MiG-21, but really cool plane, smaller than I thought it would be. Smaller, quite smaller. You can see the leap in generation, especially the change between you have like uh, a radio compressor, you know, uh, I'll, I'll edit it in here how it's called, but to me it's like the centrifuge compressor. And then you have like a, a more modern turbojet, so the, the plane gets, you know, thinner. Really cool. Uh, you know, it's glory. Really interesting play. This was a. Uh, I hope I took the picture, but it's not mistaking me to 21F. And then a Starfighter. This one I was surprised. This was much, much bigger than. Like. In length. Than any other plane I, I saw. It's like. This thing is huge. Huge. Absolutely huge. I was surprised. Later on, I think in part three of these videos about uh, I visited three museums. Uh, you can see one in good condition in the museum. You can get closer. Man, this plane is huge. But there you have it, F one o four. Then an Alpha Jet. I really like trainers, and Alpha Jet is really cute. Nothing too special about this one. In the video, I can I can get a little bit of the cockpit. Uh, inside of the hangar of this museum, they have some some gliders and some helicopters and this is one of the the planes in there uh, Aka Flieg Stuttgart FS26 no idea what is that but yeah I cannot read anything here later I could use Google Lens or something like that but so more pictures of me just to prove that I was really close to a MiG-15 iconic day I was looking good in here 
And I'd have to 86. I was trying to take a good angle from this plane, but could not get one. Here have me, my sweaty foreheads. It was actually a really, like a really pleasant day, but kind of the warm side. But yeah, MiG-21, uh, then you have the MiG-15. I got the Fiat, uh, the first time in my life I got close to a Fiat G91, and now I have sunglasses. Really cool plane, by the way. Really cool plane. And you, you'd be led to think about, okay, this was developed from the F-86. Actually, no. And then I tried to take some cool pictures, because, you know, this is one of, of the planes that I, I could get access to, get close and climb and all that. And it's one of my favorite planes on DCS, so, yeah. There you go. Iconic. And that was the pictures from the museum. Now I have videos, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the tower of the air club. So this is the first video, the guy taking off. This is my first, like, my first seconds get into the museum. Really beautiful field in here, really pretty view. And I, after visiting every plane and taking pictures and recording, I just sat on, on those benches and just enjoyed a good hour of sun, because it was a really pleasant day, really beautiful. So we're in the back of the museum. And here they have some really pretty air models. And yes, I know. I've been to the Air Museum of the Rio historical planes. I am recording some models, but you know, trying to record the whole collection. I've been looking at these models for some time now, so I'm just gonna do it quick. Some really pretty models in here. And I don't have a recording camera. Oh, look at sweet, they have a nutter and the V2. So I don't have a professional camera or anything, so I'm just gonna use my cell phone. I'll bump it up to 4K. Let's hope it's enough. They have some really sweet models in here. Uh, I enter here, found nobody, and start recording after having a nice walk around so I know what to tell you. Okay, bad boy here. Well, yeah, you have some others, you have some planes outside, and nobody, and no Wi Fi, so apparently I'll be walking back to the hotel. But that's not a problem. City is nice. Weather is perfect. Walking will not be a problem. I'm not much into this biplane, so yeah. So. Oh, Chinese plane. I like this one better because they're more complete. So you have like engines and can fit the engines. Never seen models like this. Honestly, this is an Albatross DV. Okay, some modern guys here. Still don't know how to fly them on DCS. Yes. Look at this Frisco. You can take the the tail completely out to see the engine. How cool is that? And the fish beds that you'll be seeing these both outside. The 19, the bad boy. So I have these two models here, now classic pits. You have a cockpit in here, Russian one, and you have another plane taking off. Let's move on. You have some helicopters, and you guys know I've been learning some helis lately. Hey, this is a Brazilian plane. Right. This gorgeous one down. And then some more modern stuff. 
I mean, if you if you are interested in this, yes. Cold War is where it's at, and we're gonna have some 104s soon enough. This one will be nice in this yes, by the way. Alouette and the Bio. This is the father of the Gazelle. And if we already have the Gazelle, the new flight model, and we're gonna have a Bio 105 soon. Soon. And we need this one. Come on, guys. Gunship. The A model. The Comet. Stuka, another Stuka, very nice, and oh my beloved Fieseler's torch, I hope in Munich I can see one of these, be really shame if I couldn't. Sharknos, don't know about that one. Lee Sander one, completely disgusting looking thing. And a Yak 18, never heard of it. And to finish it off, some random stuff here. Have an RDN4, looking great. Hey, it's me. Have a Challenger, we have a baby in the background screaming. File. The two files here. A1 and the A. We have a Mistel, which we never have ever in IL2. Looking nice. The Mosquito, never went to production. The Duck. And this guy here has some texts. But if I'm not mistaken, this one is supposed to be like the new 109, right? Like one of those crazy prototypes. We have a lipish and the, I mean this Hordon B is carrying some if I'm not mistaken that's a naval guided bomb so yeah prototypes then a salamander then an arado and an arado C we have that one in the game and the Huckabay never production unfortunately never into production but you can see it looks really close to a MiG-15 although the guided anti-air X4 it take some time to find a relative. You can see right there the X-Force under its wings. So, continuing to this tour, then I hope not blazing through the cell phone battery, but you have uh, what I assume is a replica of a Fokker DR1. Yeah, I'm not trying to record this because I don't have the best resolution. But here you have some other models, 262, a daughter, V1, 109, later models, and Stuka. And then you have this guy here, and that dude, this is a Fokker E3. Again, I don't assume this, these guys are for real because they are all in metal. So yeah, I had to confirm which is replica, which is real, because anyway, I have some strange looking stuff. Some others on a foggy window, but these are paper models, which is a first for me, and I haven't seen anything like this. Some interesting models. You have, uh, what is this? Oh yeah, the fan of the BO-105, which I assume we're gonna have soon in the game. Late Speed, uh, the Whiting, if I'm not mistaken, MiG 3, I 16, a Trainer, I, if I'm not mistaken, the Typhoon, and two Salamanders. So I have some crazy planes I don't recognize here because it's just before me. The 104, uh, Raider, a Raider thing. I don't know, a helmet and a flanker B. And here you have the cutest helicopter ever. I mean, is this a helicopter? Yeah, 
This is a Mifka Wonderland. It's a German helicopter. On top of me, we have a Nick Falter 1. And then some sailplanes, some cool heli models. I don't know the name of our helicopter, so I'm not trying this one, Zapashi. We have some really cool looking models here. It's a Tiger. That's... I don't recognize this one. And we... Maybe an Alouette? I don't know. Sea King or Sea Lion or Sea whatever. And some model back. And then... Some coins you can donate. To the museum. The craziest experiment I've seen in my life. I thought this is my first time in a museum, so yeah. Thousands of models here. And yes, friends, we have an alloy too. Look at this beauty. The big daddy of the gazelle. So more modern planes in here. Some gorgeous models. These ones are big and the baby is going at it. I stopped that video briefly to not, you know, have a child going crazy. But, you know, some beautiful modeling. I'm sorry for the reflections and lighting. I mean, this was just like a not professional thing. And, you know, just trying to capture what is being to the Schwillingen Air Museum. I'm gonna have more crazy stuff here and some old pictures. But let's get to the outside because we have some really good looking planes in there. I'm gonna start on my left. I mean, we started this walk. By the way, Rico here. How are you doing? I'm in Germany, doing God knows what. And here we have a real, pretty real Fiat 91. A G91, as you can see right here. The specs are in German, but I can get that this is the Italian G91. I have some in the nose. Yeah, reflections, I know. I'm doing my best. I don't know if the engine is still there. And you cannot get to the cockpit, but I raise my cell phone and do the best that I can do. I don't know what I'm seeing. The sun is really intense here. But this is it. This is a Fiat 91. This is a BO105 and it's ready to fly as much as the one in DCS. Okay, that, that's kind of cruel on my part. Let's move on. Now, this is great. A real MiG-15. This one I know how to fly. This one I know. And you can see right here, USSR. It's a Strauflugzeuge and a Kampflugzeuge. I don't know, but 48. This is pilots probably, and dimensions are really small plane. I know the cell phone camera does not make you know justice, but here you have it. You have the intake with a little camera in there, and then you have the 223s and the 37. I mean, Jesus, this looks ominous as fuck. You have the tanks, landing gear. And, you know, you have here the stall fence. I don't see where the landing gear pin would rise, but okay. It's not that well kept, so... But, you can see the control surfaces are operating. It's a shame I cannot convince someone to do that for me, so I could go back in there and see the joysticks moving. We have the air brake. And the tail surfaces. Let me see if you can get inside or at least open the cockpit. Unfortunately, I could not open the cockpits of any of those. They were not capable of doing that because they were sealed shut to be exposed outside. Such is life in the zone, but let's move on. 
All right. Oh wow, this window is really damaged. It's a shame because ah, only by a fucking miracle you can see. But yeah, the joystick is right there, and yeah, I can identify some of the controls. I mean, flying in some leader is not the same as flying in real life, but I can I can recognize kind of stuff that I use. The gun sights looks super complex. It's a shame I cannot open it. Yeah, real shame. Yeah, real shame. But let's stop to appreciate the cockpit that we got to know so well after flying it. You have the joystick in here, you have the brake lever in here. Oh, yeah, great interface. So you have the brake lever in here, push to, to activate the brakes, and then you, you need to use the pedals to yaw. You have the protection for the first, the second trigger, I'm sorry. You flip this and this becomes your first trigger and then your second trigger is exposed. You have here the throttle and then the, the let's say pip, but you know, gun sight, range control and some other stuff. But yeah, a cockpit of MiG-15, MiG sorry. Another ultralight takes off from the Schwinningen Air Club. Let's move on. I have a Canberra here in this really weird looking helicopter. What the hell is this? This is a... Oh, of course it's British. Sanders of Skida. And you have more kids now. It's gonna be hard to record today. But you have here a real Canberra bomber. As you say, you hear this one is harder. You hear in Rising Star, you have a Canberra bomber. You gotta remember that. Good times. And yeah. So this is a really weird plane to see in real life. It's not expecting to be so round. And the landing gear and the landing gear bay. I never never thought I'd be able to be under a Canberra bomber, but here we are. It's a Canberra B Mark II, 1949. I don't know what the hell is this nose, I don't know nothing about Canberra. Okay, here we go for the engine intake. I just met some friendly Germans who explained to me why some planes were covered. They had a hailstorm. Here I have some German kids, I cannot cannot not record this without some kids appearing so I'm just gonna give up and keep recording I try to get on the Canberra bomber hey it's free let's climb oh yeah there you go man I wish I could open this cockpit but yeah not gonna be possible like my cell phone is trying its best to focus, but I don't even I can even fit. Oh, the joystick is that. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna get much. Maybe here you can see better. Yeah, reflection is fucking it up. But anyway, Canberra bomber. How crazy it is! I'm I'm just looking at a Canberra bomber, a real one. Yep. Okay, so they have this really ungodly cursed chipman looking thing clearly from the older time in germany let's skip this video entertaining enough but i just want to say that this is a how do you pronounce that schmelak czechoslovakian plane from 62 yeah and i'm sorry friend but you look like it was made in Kerbal or something. Look ugly, I'm sorry. So, shall we move to the golden age and some modernity? It's an Alpha Jet. I mean. I don't know nothing about variations, but you can say right here. Da sobre Dornier Alpha G, s'il vous plaît. 
Frankreich, Deutschland. 73. Yeah. 73. Very nice. Let's take a closer look at the window. This one is kind of kept, you know, a little bit better. Oh, yeah. It has some modern shit going on in here. Joystick. And yeah, some uh, we had. Uh, and yes, we have a uh, uh, someone who works in here. At least you know is responsible for explaining to me that some planes were covered because they had a hailstorm. Now you know it's a 104G. This is a G variant without an engine. Without an engine, but it's a 104. Some to be on DCS. How crazy is this, huh? So Alpha Dash and 104. Now let's go to the good stuff. As you know, I'm a meager, right? And I don't know how to fly this one yet. And I'm gonna be honest, I was surprised how small it is. Because I thought it would be bigger. But size is comparable to a 86. This is the 21, the fish beds. Currently in DCS and currently doing some badass shit in DCS. This is a Mikoyan Guverich. MiG 21F fish pad C 56. How crazy, huh? This one I cannot get close to it anyway, but look at this bad boy here. Come on, cell phone, focus, man. I know the sun is in your face, but. There you go. Focus is back. And turn off too. The flying tractor, the workhorse of the Cold War. The Coat 47 Yeah, the reflections are being Reflections are nasty to my cell phone, but yeah, a coat 47 And the good thing about this specimen right here is We can get into the plane Okay, huge control surfaces my god this is holy shit this is the flap or is this the aileron cannot be aileron right that would be insane oh yeah now that the aileron and that a flap this must be landing flap or something and here we can get into the second model of the Antonov and the inclination is kind of making me hard for me to stand but there you have the cockpit. <sighs> Do some really a lot of craft shit. But... Hey, is a real cockpit? No glass in between. Nice. All right, let's get out because this is cooking me alive. Yeah. Okay, let's finish up with some early Cold War jets. Coming around, you now the final part of the Mises Museum, and you know, kind of sad to see the planes exposed like there's not in, you no know, super crazy good condition, but nice to see that you know, at least I'm able to get close to. This is the Lockheed T-33, the trainer version that. Not mistaken, came from the Starfighter, right? No, sorry, uh, Shooting Star, P-80 Shooting Star. This is the training version, only two 50 cals. I don't know if my cell phone is picking something out of it, but yeah, Training Bird, C-33, 1948. And right next to it, oh yeah, another big boy that I know how to fly in DCS, although this one I have less experience. The F-86, although this one is a Canada, it's a CL-13 Sabre Mark V. Oh yeah, Canada with K. Canada has a lot of potassium now. Look at this. Is that F-86, bro? How crazy it is. And these smaller jets, I always thought they would be bigger. It's, uh, now the craziest thing is the the first generation jets. I thought they'll be smaller, and you know, looking them real life, they 
they are not small. And the half mix 21 is like small as hell. That was crazy. I mean, I'm right next to the Sabre without the engine, which is a shame. Look at that, the Antonov 2 and the MiG-21. The MiG-21 MiG looks silly. Technology is crazy, but mainly this guy is using centrifugal engine, that one is using like a fan. So yeah, and here you have a plane I have no experience on researching. This is the Armstrong Whitworth Seahawk 1947. First generation British jet. And yes, this one meant to be operated from a carrier, which is insane. But you can have a look in there, you have the arrest hook. So yeah, and some raiders and some crazy shit. So yeah. And to finalize it, another first generation British jet. But this one of course is Swiss emblems, which makes it more interesting. Vampire. How crazy is it? Although these planes are not in prime condition, some of them are, you know, just the sum of parts. This one has been hard reformed into a vampire. Still, now I know how a vampire looks. This one, at least I can see inside of the cockpit, come on camera. This one is easy to see the, the gun sight. And there you have it. Some planes I was able, no, this is my first air museum here in Schwillingen. Crazy, I'm gonna take some pictures and this is me, Rodrigo, with a no one gets out of life shirt. Because you know, I'm in Germany. Might as well, might as well use a German band shirt and I'm gonna finish this video now. Uh, take some pictures and head back to the hotel because tomorrow is Monday and I'll be back to work. May your six be clear and your friends close. Bye bye. So this was part one or three of my exploration of German museums. This one was in Willingen, Schwillingen and part two will be in Munich as well as part three, but they're both different museums in there. So I hope you like this, you know, quick trip to a museum and I hope you like the next ones as well because I'm trying to put out on the internet as much as possible to spread the word and maybe people that will be visiting the region can go there and check for themselves. See you on the next video. Bye bye. Smack a faggot's ass.